Hi, my name is Jimmy Kerrigan. I uh, have the privilege this afternoon of talking to you about Xi'an Blue, which truly is my workhorse wire. Uh, so I have an opportunity over the next several minutes to talk about a little bit of my history with workhorse wires, why Xi'an Blue has become my workhorse, and then show some cases that highlight things. Uh, I'm currently an interventional cardiologist at, a, at a Ascension St. Thomas Hospital in Nashville, Tennessee. I co-direct our advanced coronary therapeutics program, so inclusive of chronic total occlusion, instant restenosis with brachytherapy, the, the most complicated patients. And I'll show some cases from the last couple of weeks uh, where Xi'an Blue has excelled, where potentially others may not have. Uh, the slide says it's a new wire. I've been using it for years. My personal pathway with workhorse wires started with a pro water. I uh, felt as though it was adequate. I could really feel very well when I was moving through a vessel, when I was hitting the wall, hitting calcium, hitting the lesion. The torque response wasn't great. Um, I then moved on when it was introduced to a nitinol based wire, which was better with regards to torque transmission and being lubricious enough to slip through lesions. But I lost that sense of feel, the ability to, to tell when the tip of the wire was against the wall or against a lesion, which made me nervous, especially in patients with an acute MI or not that we use workhorse wires to recanalize chronic total occlusion, but uh, for those cases where the wire gets into something and I don't know what's distal, it just felt a little bit scary at times to not be able to feel if there was something wrong. So when Xi'an Blue was introduced, the combination of lubriciousness in order to traverse difficult anatomy, one-to-one -one torqueability because of Act 1 technology, and then a special tip design, which we'll discuss, which gives you back that ability to sense what's going on at the tip of the wire. It didn't take long for me to decide that Xi'an Blue is my first pull and Pro Water remains near and dear to my heart. It's my green wire that I'll use for side branches. Um, and there are several features of the Xi'an Blue, as I talked about, that go into making this my workhorse wire. Not only does it deliver well, can I feel the tip and can I make sure that there's one-to-one -one torque transmission when I'm working, which becomes important with complex intervention. It's also supportive enough for me to deliver laser catheters, brachytherapy catheters, big balloons, cutting balloons, shockwave now uh, over it. So I think that it truly does marry the best of all worlds with regards to uh, the ability to use the wire to get to the vessel through the lesion and then get the devices in that are needed to help our patients feel better. And it's safe. I don't worry about end perforations as much as I do with other jacketed wires because it's not. Uh, and then Asahi wants to point out that it's not a green wire like the majority of the rest of the wires that they have. So a little bit on the construction of the Xi'an Blue. Uh, so the way that this wire is so torqueable and maneuverable is because of the construction with regards to what's known as Act 1 technology. So a layer of coils on coils, which ride on the core wire as well. Uh, the spring coil is what we see at the end of the wire, the radio opaque portion there, which is about 20 centimeters long. But that composite technology allows you to transmit torque from the end of the wire where our hands are to the tip of the wire 190 centimeters away. Uh, and truly is generally speaking one-to-one -one torque, accepting the most complex anatomy. So the tip load, it's a, it's a 0.5 gram wire. So it's a relatively soft wire, softer even than a Xi'an or a Xi'an Black, uh, halfway between that and a SUO3, of course. Um, the distal 30 millimeters or so is radio opaque. The coil goes for 20 centimeters. And we'll talk a little bit about the coating. It is a hydrophilic coated non-jacketed wire um, with 190 centimeter uh, length there. So it's a little bit longer than some of the other wires, not as long as some other wires on the market, but definitely not having to struggle with regards to 300 centimeter wires. So as I said, it's a hydrophilic coated wire, which means that it's slippery. And once you get the tip through the lesion, the rest of it tends to slide along pretty well. Um, there is a silicone coating for the first 15 millimeters or so, which does give back that tactile sensation, which competitor wires potentially have lost in the favor of having a, a jacketed slippery wire. And every wire has its niche, of course, but for a workhorse, I really do want to be able to feel what's going on at the tip. And once I get the tip through the lesion, I want the wire to move past without much in the way of buckling or resistance. So I think that this construction really has provided the best of both worlds with regards to that. We talked about the composite core a little bit, the way that the Wire is designed with a series of coils on coils coming from the core in order to ensure that you have tip to hub torque transmission without fail. 
The tip itself is stainless steel, so not nitinol. It's a very durable tip. So here the engineers took the wire, jammed it in at a certain strength and trying a straight wire, trying to see how badly the tip deformed when you pulled it out. So on the top, you can see the Xi'an blue has a little bit of a, a nice bend to it. The run through uh, the nitinol wire competitor uh, has a bit more of a bend to it, a little curviness, and then the BMW has even more. So the tip shape retention is quite nice. It's easy to shape. And sometimes when I use other wires, I forget uh, how easy it is. And I horribly mangle the other wires when I try to design them because I'm either using a Xi'an blue or putting a CTO little one millimeter bend on it. Uh, but so generally speaking, the Xi'an blue is easy to shape and retains its tip shape throughout the case, which is important, uh, especially when you're wire swapping through side branches. So this is a, a theoretical best. So what you want to see is when you spin a wire 360 degrees, that the tip of the wire moves 360 degrees. So a one-to-one -one or a completely linear torque transmission. And you see here the theoretical best. And then on the bench, um, what the competitor wires do, a BMW here, a run through here, versus the Xi'an Blue, which tracks truly one-to-one, -one, one of the benefits of Act One technology. Uh, really unmatched from uh, most of the other wires that I have used. Lubricity as well. So how slippery is the wire? The less lubricious BMW, it's not designed to be a slippery wire. As I said, I had switched to run through a nitinol wire after using Pro Water for a while because it was slippery, but I had lost that tip sensation. So now again, because of the way the wire is designed, you have a slippery wire. Once the tip of the wire is through the lesion, the wire will go without much resistance. Uh, but then you do have that added benefit like the Pro Water or BMW of being able to feel. And then support. So I'll show some cases in a little bit, but support's important. Once the wire is down, I generally don't want to have to buy a Corsair Pro and then swap out for a support wire. I would like to be able to work over the wire that I just wired the vessel with by and large. And my administrators appreciate that as well as much as I can. So this is looking at a wire from uh, the end of the wire to the beginning of the wire with regards to how much support you have. Obviously, when you get to the very tip of the radio opaque portion, you don't have much in the way of support, which is why we don't generally work there. As you get back to the very end of the wire and, and the, hand, the end that you're holding, it's a much stiffer wire. And you can see here, compared to run through and BMW, the support, the ability, the stiffness of the wire is higher for the Xi'an Blue through the distal tip of the wire, the working area of the wire that's in the vessel. That helps with device deliverability, device stability, um, just makes life a lot easier. Tip load we talked about, it's half a gram, uh, same as a run through, a little bit lighter than a BMW and some other wires, and it's not green. So uh, I've told engineers, I've told people in, a, in a Asahi that if I could get Xi'an Blues in a box of five and all five were different colors, one was red, one was blue, one was green, one was yellow, one was black, that would be all I ever used. Um, so at the moment, it's not the case because I'll use a Xi'an blue and then a green wire, either a Manamo or a Pro Water in order to, for my, to mark a side branch from that standpoint. Um, so yeah, very common and complex intervention, which I'm sure the people watching this video do regularly to need multiple wires. Color is the best way we have at the moment to differentiate unless you want to purposely kink the back end of your side branch wire, which uh, one of my mentors from Cleveland uh, did that as the way to mark it. And it was awfully fun trying to load devices on the back of the kinked wire. So let's do some cases. Let's uh, talk about some uh, cases from the last couple of weeks. So this is a gentleman who came in uh, with chest pain. He had a known circumflex chronic total occlusion, well, diagnosed at an outside institution, referred for treatment because he was really debilitated, having pretty significant angina after walking 10 to 15 steps. The parking garage to my office uh, crosses a walkway and there's a relatively long hallway. It's probably 400 or 500 feet. He had to stop several times in order to get there. And that's despite being on four anti-anginal medications with good blood pressure control, good heart rate control. So uh, we checked an MRI. That's our preferred test of choice for the patients with CTO to make sure that we assess for viability. PET with viability is an alternative. Uh, and our very helpful imaging colleagues read this as a low risk study because he had an area of stress induced ischemia in the lateral wall. So dual injections by radial standard approach for CTOs, I think for most of us nowadays, uh, you can see here that it looks like a relatively straightforward CTO. The proximal cap is non-ambiguous. The distal cap is at a bifurcation. Uh, it's a circumflex, circumflexes are evil, but beyond that, it seemed like a, a relatively straightforward procedure, not a ton in the way of retrograde options. 
Uh, so given that a definite primary anti-grade strategy was the choice for this procedure for this day. Some osteocircumflex complex disease uh, that we addressed as well. So start with a Corsair Pro, Xi'an Blue, a gentle injection to make sure that I was engaging the cap in the right spot before I swapped over to my Gaia and got uh, into something a bit stiffer. And then probing in the lesion with my Gaia, eventually I'm able to get started uh, into the lesion. Things look like it's progressing in the, the right direction. Uh, and that's a reset, not a pullback. Uh, so then I inject, we're definitely going in the right direction. Uh, so then it's just a matter of advancing the wire and the space that I'm in and then figuring out where I am. So another wire, the guy next with uh, Act 1 technology and one-to-one -one torque transmission. So feel confident when I know where I'm going that this is my first pull. Uh, but unfortunately, I thought I knew where I was going, but now I'm in the subventimal space beside the vessel. So the issue with this becomes the distal cap is at a bifurcation. I don't have room for anti-grade dissection re-entry with a stingray balloon. Uh, AFE probably also not a lot of room there in order to fenestrate and re-enter and preserve access to both branches. I think that the AV Groove Cirque is a relatively large branch and giving a lot of the collateralization there. So I don't want the patient to become ischemic either. So the decision was made for parallel wire. So trapped out the Corsair Pro, trapped in or ran in a Sasuke. And then through the side port of the Sasuke, advanced the Gladius Mongo, which thankfully appeared to have found the true lumen. So got it intraplaque uh, and then just twiddling it forward, absolutely no resistance. At no point did it ever fold over and then it popped through. So again, retrograde injection, how we always confirm where the wire is shows that I'm in the big branch that goes backwards, but I have no protection into the actual uh, obtuse marginal system, which is relatively large and where the ischemia was. So knowing that, uh, pulled out the Sasuke, uh, trapped it out, uh, went back in with the Sasuke with this as the RX port wire, and then advanced a Xi'an Blue, uh, and then used a Xi'an Blue in order to hairpin and advance down the obtuse marginal. So getting it down, torquing the wire as you pull back, uh, and then getting into the side branch. And then ran it down, I felt confident based on the wire behavior that I was in the true lumen, and then it formed a, a nice safe knuckle there at the end for me. Retrograde injection always before doing anything to confirm where we are. And now I can tell that I am in the true lumen, a, a, not the dominant branch of the obtuse marginal, but adequate for me to start treating. Uh, so as usual, perform intravascular ultrasound for sizing of the balloons, ended up dilating uh, with a 2.5 balloon to make some space. Uh, this isn't a PCI talk, so stented the vessel, trapping the Mongo uh, there, but there was good flow. Um, here you can see that there is proximal disease, as we had mentioned previously, also a little bit of a, a pinch to that first obtuse marginal. Uh, so work to optimize that. I've extended my stent proximally. This is all over the Xi'an Blue, of course. I've now got a pro water into that ramus vessel. Um, and then after optimization, nitroglycerin, interventional Photoshop. Uh, so good flow throughout the vessels. Uh, at the ostium and throughout. So throughout this case, the Xi'an Blue, after I was able to get it down, provided me the support I needed in order to treat the vessel from beginning to end, multiple stents, kissing balloon inflations I neglected to show you to, to dilate the ostium of that obtuse marginal, uh, and started it all with a hairpin through the Sasuke. So I think overall showed the maneuverability, the torque transmission, but then the support uh, of the wire. Again, if uh, I had a green Xi'an blue, I would just use that instead of the pro water, but I don't. Second case was fun. So this was a patient on uh, one of our brachytherapy days. Uh, this is a gentleman who had had multiple layers of stent in his right coronary artery, came into one of our sister institution with ongoing chest pain that had been progressive. Uh, even getting around his house, completing his activities of daily living was difficult. So I don't think he minded not doing the laundry or vacuuming, but uh, other people in the household wanted him to feel better. He was on three anti-anginals, and then he had a nuclear study at the outside facility, which showed uh, moderate, severe, reversible, uh, mid-inferior ischemia, which was defined as intermediate risk, had a normal ejection fraction. So when they had done the angiogram at the outside hospital, there was proximal instant restenosis. Uh, in this right corner, you can see it's pretty dense. There are multiple layers of stent there. Uh, so I went in with an AL guide, uh, thinking I might need some additional support in order to perform intervention on this. My usual pathway is balloon angioplasty with a scoring or cutting balloon, laser atherectomy, coronary brachytherapy, and then finishing with an NC to get to a one-to-one -one size based on IVUS. Uh, now the thing looked like it had completely occluded. It only been a couple of weeks. And um, so that was uh, frustrating, at least at the beginning. 
So I flipped around, had single access, not planning to do a CTO and injected the uh, native left system and saw that there was absolutely no collateralization to the RCA in these pictures. So now I was freaking out thinking maybe I had just lost the vessel because we waited two weeks to bring him over and uh, perform his intervention. Uh, eventually what I was able to figure out is that somebody had uh, very helpfully stented out into the middle of nowhere. So this is a multi-purpose guide. Uh, and the patient was unhelpfully breathing quite a bit. So you can see me fishing here with my Xi'an blue, uh, trying to catch the ostium of the right coronary stent that was hanging out into the middle of nowhere uh, with some success and then frustratingly losing it. So uh, yelling at the patient to stop breathing so heavily, but he's out of it at this point. Uh, so eventually I'm able to get the Xi'an tip into the RCA stents and quickly take advantage of a respiratory pause and twiddle the wire down distal into the vessel. Now, again, this is one of those situations where with other wires, if I'm using a hydrophilic jacketed wire and I don't can't feel the tip, I might get nervous that I'm going to be getting into a small side branch or getting into a lesion or into a plaque and not knowing it. But here you can see the wire buckle. I immediately felt it. So I'm able to come back, redirect. Uh, I have a, a much more aggressive bend on this than I normally would, but I was trying to fish from the aorta. Uh, eventually get the wire sunk down in there. So kind of frustrating to, to complete, but at the end of the day, uh, it worked. So now you can see that there's severe instant restenosis of the proximal vessel. My wire, thankfully, is an, an actual vessel. And then the rest of it is standard uh, work. So NC balloon, you can see a residual significant waste. Perform intravascular ultrasound for stent sizing. Uh, the mechanism for stent failure in this situation was undersizing. 11%, uh, I think, of all PCI done in this country is for uh, instant restenosis. So the biggest thing that we can do to prevent that is making sure the stents are put in at the right size the first time. Uh, we know from the ultimate trial that doing so reduces instant restenosis rates to less than 2% at one year. So uh, a lot of uh, undersizing with some extrinsic calcification. So went in with laser. Again, this is all over my Xi'an blue. Um, having to work with his breathing cycle, having to work with the guide in order to make sure that I can get things coaxial, eventually go in. Uh, I believe this was a, a one four laser, if I recall, because this is a big vessel. I think the reference vessel was a three over three five. Uh, so did laser at multiple passes at 60, 40. We won't discuss whether or not I added any other substances to the artery at the time of the laser atherectomy. Uh, and then went back in with an NC or uh, a cutting balloon, uh, a scoring balloon, excuse me. Uh, so went back in with a scoring balloon, got better dilation at that point, angiographically looking better. It's not perfect. Uh, delivered my brachytherapy catheter. Those of you who do brachytherapy know that this is not the most deliverable device in the world. Uh, even so, no issues here, despite the issues getting the laser down, getting the wire even in the vessel, the brachytherapy delivered once I was pretty well coaxial. A guide extension catheter would have been nice potentially here as well, but that makes things more difficult with the brachytherapy for delivering treatment. Leave the catheter in for four and a half minutes, whatever our helpful radiation physicist tells me, uh, and then take it out. Repeat my IVUS, see what kind of luminal gain I've achieved. Uh, go back in and post dilate and uh, ended up coming out with the NC and flaring the stent in multiple different directions. God forbid I need to go back in. Uh, my hope is that it's not quite as difficult or complicated next time. Uh, and uh, optimize things with an NC. And yeah, so I think that um, in this instance, so the one-to-one -one torque transmission, I was fishing for this vessel in the middle of nowhere. It's not like I was well engaged and I knew exactly how to get into this and where to go. And thankfully I didn't go through a side strut of the stent when doing so. Um, so the ability to do that, you know, from yard sailing things away, uh, was quite useful in order to get the lesion wired. And once the wire was down, I had no idea where I was going because I hadn't been able to inject contrast in the vessel more so to know that there was a vessel there. Uh, so knowing as I could feel the tip that I wasn't getting into something that was dangerous uh, and then working over it, delivering scoring balloons, NC balloons, IVUS catheters, brachytherapy, laser atherectomy and doing so. And you can see the tip of the wire looks about the same as I had shaped it, you know, 45 minutes, an hour prior. So tip retention as well is, is an important factor for this. All right, one more case. Uh, because I'm sure half of you are asleep by now. Um, so uh, this is a gentleman, 68 years old, who had come in with angina uh, to my office and uh, because of financial concerns, wasn't able to get non-invasive ischemic evaluation, uh, had come in 
to our cath lab because of that with a plan to perform IFR guided revascularization. So had some disease in the LED, which was IFR normal, had some disease in the ramus, which was abnormal. And I was able to fix that and get a good post-procedural IFR 0.97 or so, if I recall. Uh, but so using the, the Philips IFR wire, which is a good wire, I was completely unable to get into the actual circumflex. Uh, it was a retroflex osteolase stenosed vessel. Um, I was able to use a Xi'an blue to get into the vessel, trying to straighten things out and then went back in with the Omni wire and still couldn't get it down. It has its limitations. It is a pressure wire after all. So I paused and knew that he was working through the financial aid process for our institution. Uh, so knew that I would, you know, hopefully be able to manage him medically until we could get some ischemic evaluation. Despite that, he continued having chest pain, chest pain walking from the parking lot of that office into my office, uh, mostly when he would smoke as well, but we're working on that. Um, he had an ischemic cardiomyopathy, so he was on Corvetolol and Secubitril Valsartan, also on Renolazine. His baseline blood pressures were in the 90s at that point, so I didn't feel comfortable adding uh, amlodipine or isosorbide. And then had an MRI. He also has an RCA CTO, always fun, except in him, unfortunately, it's probably non-viable. Uh, a PET may be a, a good test for him to figure that out. Regardless, it did show that there was an area of ischemia in the lateral wall, but overall it was considered low risk based on uh, the amount of myocardium uh, at risk. That being said, his EF is low. So I would uh, respectfully disagree with our uh, MRI readers. So here's his circumflex. It's a relatively small area, but really that's all that he had left other than the CTO uh, to be causing chest pain. You can see the ramus there has a little bit of stenosis distal to the edge of the stent that I had put in a few weeks prior. Again, the IFR on that was normal, so I didn't think it worthwhile to test that again. So it goes straight down. It was difficult to get uh, anything really to go uh, at this point. And whereas previously I had a bare Xi'an blue that I was able to get down into the vessel this time, I did need the assistance of a support catheter because um, I, I promise you I did try to inflow save any of my failures because uh, we all have egos, I guess. But uh, tried for a while with just the Xi'an blue in order to get into the circumflex and did have to end up buying a support catheter in order to do so. Uh, so advanced the Xi'an blue, advanced the microcatheter uh, there. And then I was able to, even with these curves in the vessel and in the, because this is of course a radial case, so the curves in the shoulder and in the guide, uh, able to work through the vessel. I could feel there that something was wrong uh, and then eventually get the circumflex wired. So after trapping out the uh, support catheter, uh, got to work. And surprisingly, the intravascular ultrasound catheter actually delivered quite easily over this wire. Uh, so performed IVUS, found the sizing as we are standard to do, uh, pre-dilated after I protected uh, the ramus with a pro water um, all the way back into the left main just a little bit, made sure that we got one-to-one -one sizing after stenting, went in and post-dilated, uh, performed intravascular ultrasound again, which showed that we had good stent expansion and apposition. And at that point I felt comfortable pulling my wire back. So again, uh, a quicker case, but overall just an example of uh, a, a tortuous vessel needing some pretty good support in order to deliver relatively non-deliverable devices like IVUS into this. Uh, and that allowed me to succeed in treating this gentleman. And I've actually seen him back in clinic since then uh, this week and his angina thankfully has resolved except for when he uses his vape pen, which he's uh, switched to from uh, his cigarettes, so maybe some aspect of Berger's disease or vasospastic angina, but hopefully I'll help him get off of that over time and work to keep these uh, stents open so that he feels better and does the things that help him live longer. So overall, when it comes to looking at Xi'an Blue and why it's my wire, uh, I think we've talked about this ad nauseum, but I trust the wire because it has one-to-one -one torque transmission. When I spin the torque device or my fingers on the end of the wire, I know that the tip is going to move. And if the tip doesn't move, that's an indication that I'm not in a good spot. So uh, definitely, you know, sub plaque or sub intimal or, uh, you know, with a fractured tip. So, you know, we put these wires to the test. So one of the things that I would caution is if you have a wire with Act 1 technology and you're spinning the wire and the tip doesn't move, reevaluate why that is because it shouldn't be because of the length of the wire. More often than not, you've got the tip of the wire not in a great place. Um, it's a supportive wire. It lets me get these devices down. It, the tip is durable. The tip retains its shape. The tip uh, is usable for wire swapping. I didn't show a specific case of that, but when I've got the Xi'an blue down and a pro water and a side branch and I'm provisionaling, 
uh, more often than not, if I have any concern, I'm able to pull the blue back, immediately go down the side branch and then pull the pro water and go down the main vessel and wire swap in that fashion without having to pull the wire out because it's lost its tip uh, and making it difficult to cross. And then again, it's lubricious, but not overly so. So you can still feel at the tip what is going on. So when you get into the situation where the wire is in an area that you can't visualize because of thrombus or terrible guide engagement, uh, you can feel confident that you're not going to push the wire through something that you shouldn't. Um, and as I said, it's a black wire. The rest of the wires are green. So one day, whenever we have multicolored Xi'an blues, we can change the side. But at this point, that's kind of the main reason uh, that main reasons that I use it. So uh, feel free to contact me with any questions or uh, comments or concerns or case review opportunities. Or uh, this is my Twitter handle. This is my email. These are my kids. Uh, eating popsicles on a recently very warm day here in Nashville. So um, if I can ever be of, of assistance to you personally or professionally, please feel free to reach out. And thanks again to Asahi for the opportunity to speak and talk to everyone about why I use the wires that I do.